week, we concluded with the very thought one plus one equals one. That's right. We continue this very thought as we reflect on the power of oneness within our lives and how it transforms everything that we do and say and how we live in this world. It's coming from a consciousness that says there's no separation. There's no separation between us and God. No separation whatsoever between us and one another. For we're all connected in this wonderful consciousness, this wonderful understanding and awareness of the divine presence of God. For the presence of God is in you and in you and in you and in me. So turn to someone and say, good morning, God. Good morning, God. That's right. For the divine is within each and every one of you. And today we see God showing up in all different kinds of ways. God showing up as a Georgia Bulldog fan. God showing up uh, (laughs) as a musician. God showing up in a red blouse. God showing up carrying a purse. God showing up in all different shapes and ways and sizes and colors and races, genders and sexual orientations. That's right. For God within us is being revealed each and every step of the way of our life. Every breath we take, we're called to be the revelation of God and to reveal, to show the wonderful power and presence that's deep within and resonating through our lives, radiating from within us. To awaken then to this truth that there is no separation. That we are all part of the ocean of God. In each one of us, a wave containing the whole but not its entirety. Containing the wonderful essence of the DNA of that ocean that we travel in. So it is this metaphor shapes our understanding, the divine presence. Every one of us within the divine presence. Every one of us a revelation. God flowing in, through, around, and always for us. This is so important what we understand this because it then brings us a new sight. A new sight and in sight. Sight is not just that which is the brain registering that which it sees in the physical world and bringing that message to us. Sight is not just that which we would say uh, it is just this what we see before us in a physical realm, but let me entertain this idea for you that sight is something ever more. Even more than that, it is a deep and spiritual insight taking us to another level of comprehension, to be able to have spiritual insight. Well, it comes to us when we acknowledge that we are one with the divine. That's right, God working in you. Right now, in this moment, God working in you, wanting to express through you, wanting to be all around you, wanting to flow through you for your highest and best. And so when we comprehend that to its fullest extent, we truly understand this is insight seeing deep within, within the spiritual realm of our lives. That insight offers us a different perspective, that there is no separation. So with no separation, we know there's no separation from your highest and best. There's nothing to keep you from your highest and best. There's no separation. There's no separation between us and God and one another. When we understand this, then we can say, I see it because I know it's there. Because I know there's no separation. So you can say, I can see the good with insight. I see the good because I know that the good is here all around me. And my spiritual eyes can say, no matter what the circumstances I'm going through, the good is there to be revealed. And so I see it now through an insight. That kind of insight sees then beyond any kind of limitations. And our spiritual life is taking us to move beyond any concept of thought of limitation in our lives. To move well beyond, to see beyond. Because we in our physical realm may constantly say, oh, I can only see so far. I can only do so much. We constantly reiterate all of our limitations. And yet in the spiritual realm, inviting you to live and move and to see well beyond any kind of limitation. Insight sees the preferred outcome of the journey of your life into the field of possibilities. I see the good, I see the answer, I see the solution. That's the way we live when we are constantly living from insight. I see the possibility. 
And you may say, well, where are they? I, I can't put my hand on the solution. Where's the answer? Is it there for you? Oh, I see it because I know it. And as I see it, I claim it, I speak it, I believe it, and I live as if. And how powerful that is for us in our lives. Because this seeing is the power of oneness. I know that I'm one with all that is good. I know that I'm one with all that is mighty and powerful. I know that I'm one with all. That's everything. Everything. Now, if you believe that, if you believe that you're really one with everything, then you have to believe that you are also one with that which is in this world and that which is in the next world. When we think about these candles and the lives of loved ones who have transitioned, when we embrace this understanding that there's no separation, life transitions. Yes, this physical realm may come to an end, but the soul is eternal. And we are connected and not separated, but connected in this wonderful understanding of soul to soul, the power of the presence of God in flowing in and through our lives. When we understand that connection, we understand we're connected with all that is good right here and now, and we're one with it. And we're also one with our loved ones who've transitioned, those who are no longer with us in the physical realm. We celebrate today All Souls Day, All Saints Day, All Lights Day, whatever name you'd like to give it, because it's really embodying us a celebration of loved ones, their life and love not forgotten, knowing that it's still with us, even though they may not be here in physical realm, we acknowledge we are still one with them, and their presence is around us. For death is just another one of those illusions, and illusions that are brought to us because we're caught up in this three-dimensional world, and we're not looking with insight into the spiritual realm to know that life is eternal. You always have been, you are now, you always will be. The soul is eternal. And we get this chance to awaken to this understanding that although loved ones have transitions, they are not distant from us, but present with us, manifested in wonderful, loving ways and caring ways of energy of guidance and truth and insight that shows to us. You see, Jesus said in this beautiful text you read today, in my Father's house there are many mansions, if it were not, I go to prepare a place for you. If it were not so, I would have told you. Now, we think of that in funeral services. We talk about those mansions that we're going to move to in eternity in that context. But Jesus had a much deeper meaning for us to understand. For we look at the translation of that word mansions. It says, in my father's house, there are many rooms, many realms, many dimensions. Hard for us to understand in the language that's provided for us. We look at our English. We could go back to the Aramaic. We're trying to break it all down. But we understand the science of the understanding of this, that in the wonderful divine presence that is God, there are many different facets, many different realms. There's a place prepared for each and every one of us. And as we acknowledge those different realms, we understand we're connected with them. For that place that's prepared is this wonderful place in the divine presence to be resting there, to be in fellowship, to be in connection, and to be in oneness with one another. We understand that the soul is always alive and eternal, ever living and ongoing, and it only travels to the next room in the Father's house. For we dwell in this wonderful presence of God here in this earth, I hear people say, you know what? I like to call it he's going home when he passes away, when they die. Or she's passing on to go home to be with God. And I want to say, wait, have we not been home with God here? Because that presence that is there in eternity is also that same presence with us here. So if we've been home, we don't go home. We just move to another room within the Father's house. We understand our loved ones being there in another dimension, 
in a wonderful place, but we're still connected. For that point is that we understand that energy is moving and flowing and vibrating, and that soul is this wonderful life force energy that continues on, and it's living and moving and ever vibrating around us all the time because nothing rests. Now, you may say, wait a minute. I don't know if I buy all that. Now, isn't it funny? You'll pick up your cell phone, and you'll talk to a friend a hundred 200, 500 miles away. And there's no connection. It's just energy flowing through from their phone to yours. You'll pick up your laptop and you'll open it up and you'll see all kinds of visuals. You'll actually see and Skype someone. You may see an experience that's taking place live. You may connect with something overseas in a foreign country. Write that in that moment and you wonder, how am I connected with this? I'm not there. They're not here. How is it we're connected? Oh, it's that wonderful energy flowing that's connecting us. And then we say, wait a minute, it's hard to believe that our loved ones who've gone on Oh, we're disconnected. We're not connected. Oh, we are. That wonderful life energy is still with us. It may be difficult for us to understand this, but we must comprehend this spirit of oneness that says those who've gone on, that were here with us, are always with us. Let me share this story. Years ago, we were famous for our rainbow balloon release. That's right. At our former building, we would gather on Sunday morning, a Pride Sunday, to release a rainbow of balloons with messages attached to each one of the balloons. Committees would come and gather in the chapel. Barbara Summers, Nanu, Martha Tanner, many others would gather together and blow up with helium tanks all these wonderful multicolored balloons that created a rainbow and attached simple ribbons to them with a message on them that offered the church's name, address, phone number, but more importantly, a message that says, you are loved. What we wanted to do, more importantly, was not just release a rainbow of color, but in that rainbow offering the wonderful message of love to a world around us, and it was so symbolic that on Sunday morning following the service, when people exited out of the door, ushers were there to hand you a helium balloon to take outside and gather in the parking lot. We would gather out in the parking lot and there is a crowd gathered together and offer a blessing upon these balloons and the release of the power of love that's embodied in each one of these rainbow colors of diversity. Releasing it into the world and letting it rise to its highest levels and be carried by the winds. And there would be this exciting moment of a countdown. Nine, eight, seven, six, Five, four, three, two, one. And we would release it. And all the balloons would go up and we'd watch and applaud as the balloons carried away by the winds with loving messages. One year, about three days later, I got a phone call. Phone rang and it was someone from South Carolina and said, we got your balloons. I said, what? South Carolina, you got our balloons? Yes, we got your balloon. Let me tell you. We were gathering together, she said, as a family. Our father had died a year ago on that day. We gathered together as a family for a Sunday dinner. We sat around the table and reminisced dad. We talked about how much we loved him and how much we wanted to just have a moment of feeling his love because he loved us so much. After we had shared stories and laughed and reminisced, she said, my brother and I stepped out on the porch to smoke a cigarette. And there we were kind of days gazing out with a kind of a glazed eye looking out into this yard in our backyard, just our mind full of memories. And there came a little red balloon and it just drifted down and attached to the fence and it stuck there and we were like mesmerized for a moment we ran out to grab that balloon in that conversation she said we were reflecting and remembering oh I'd love to hear dad say you're loved I'd love to hear that once again 
And she said, when we ran to the fence and grabbed that balloon, it was red. Dad loved red balloons. Dad loved red balloons. And when we picked up the message and we saw it says, you are loved. We just burst in tears, grabbing that balloon. We ran into the family gathering. Dad's here. He's with us. Dad is trying to tell us something. Dad is trying to convey this message. Dad is trying to say, you are loved. I said, you're calling from South Carolina? You're 300 and some miles away? And on the day that we released the balloons, that balloon landed in your yard? And she said, oh, it didn't land. Angels grabbed it, snatched it up from flight. Dad brought it to us and said, pick the red one. Bring that red one there and tie it to the fence. See that it's attached there because I want so badly them to know they're loved. You see, this is the spirit of oneness that we live in. That when we understand what it means to be one, we're one for all eternity. One with God, one with the divine presence, one with one another. Now, I hate to tell you this, but we're going to be one together forever. As much as you may not like it. No. <laughs> I'm going to be one with you, and I'm going to be one with you, and you're going to be one with me, and we're all going to be one together. Isn't that a wonderful thought and expression to think that no matter what transpires in the journey of this moment, we're in this wonderful oneness that we share together. This is about living in a way that we see with insight beyond limitations. Because there's far too many would say, oh, pastor, that's just a coincidence. You know, it's just a coincidence that the balloon happened to be red. There are many colors. You know, it just so happened that the wind carried them 300 and some miles in a matter of a few hours. It's just a coincidence that you just happened to attach a message that they wanted to hear and know. It just so it was a crazy coincidence that it would happen on the day that they're gathering together as a family to remember their father's passing. Oh, it's just a silly coincidence. It's really not that important. It's not that really of a big deal because what? Those things happen every day? Well, they don't. You see, that's the beauty. The beauty is that this was ordained to us to understand and comprehend we're one in the divine presence and one with one another. Here's the beautiful thing that happens is that when we wake up to this kind of insight, this wake up to this kind of seeing beyond the limits of life, of this physical world, to wake up to seeing and being metaphysical, meaning beyond the physical in all of our realms of consciousness and thinking, that we start thinking and living from a spiritual life, we change everything. Do you know that the discovery of the light bulb, that insight was there all along? But it took someone to think beyond the limitations because the insight and all that it took to make a light bulb was always there. They just had to let it unfold within us because we are all here then to learn and to grow and to understand this, that we learn and we grow and we develop and we shape our lives through this insight, this spiritual awakening that we're called to wake up to live life beyond the limits, to live life in the way of seeing beyond the limits. There's a story told of three pastors playing golf with Deepak Chopra, and it's a true story. They gathered on the golf course to play a round of golf, and they were all, you know, trying to be the spiritual entities that they were and praying for their highest and best in the game that they were playing with Deepak <laughs> Chopra. And as they made the round, the different holes. There was one very challenging hole on the golf course that had sort of a water trap, you know? They had to hit that ball over that water to get to the green. And the first pastor got up with all of his might and belief, and he got there and swung and hit that ball and splash right in the water. Next pastor said, I got this one down. He began to get the line up and swing and everything going just perfect and splash. Another one in the water. Third pastor gets up. 
knowing with confidence, seeing that water trap, facing that water trap, looking at that water trap. With, you know, I'm gonna, we're going to cross that water trap. Swings, hits the ball, and splash. Third one in. Deepak Chopra gets up. It's his turn to swing. He lines up, gets ready with his uh, golf uh, club. Thank you. <laughs> Love these sports analogies, don't you? <laughs> I'm so good at them. I know he's not playing basketball. <laughs> and I know it's not baseball, so it's a sport. It's a club. And uh, swings. And the ball hits the green. And the pastors say, wait a minute. How, we all did our very best. How did you surpass the water? Deepak Chopra says, what water? What water? <laughs> you see, seeing beyond, seeing beyond the limits, seeing beyond the limitations is what we're called to do in our day-to-day -day spiritual journey. To understand I'm not alone. I'm connected. I'm not separated from the divine. That presence of God is with me, never leaving me nor forsaking me. I'm not separated from one another, and I'm certainly not separated from my beloved loved ones. They're with me. So I encourage you today to live this kind of life that has an insight to the unlimited possibilities of your life to let go of the physical realms and to welcome these experiences of the divine ever unfolding for you, to welcome the sense of understanding of the divine oneness that we're all connected together and there's nothing that separates us. So I invite you to live the life of seeing beyond limits of the many realms, the many divisions, the many, shall we say, uh, departments, the many dimensions of the divine that are there for each and every one of us. Amen.